Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 10. Did you know that Retrolog has a sequencer? Well, today we're going to use the sequencer within Retrolog to make a whole track. Let's go! Okay, so we're here in Cubase and um, let me just pull up a Retrolog and I'll show you what the sequencer sort of looks like. Um, so if you're on the main page, you can uh, you know, choose your patch and uh, affect your filters and your oscillators and everything. But actually on the second tab, you have a step sequencer type thing. And so I use step mode for everything. There's uh, arpeggiators if you want them, but I just use the step mode because that uh, made the most sense for this application. And I'll just show you how I use the step mode to make a whole track. So this is the kick. And I wasn't shy about using uh, presets. I use presets for everything because I wanted to get this done fast. So we're going to start with a little pet peeve of mine. I don't know if it's a pet peeve of yours, but sometimes you don't get the attribute browser. When you open this, you just have to choose and you can sort by category base and scroll down. But actually you can get the attribute browser as if you would clicked up here uh, where you can choose what you want. It's just hidden, I think, by default. And it's this little thing right here. And if you put on filters, um, you can, you know, choose drum kick drum boom and then you have all the kicks so i just chose all presets for this and let's listen to the kick uh why don't we okay and one thing that's important to notice is this right here this 12 this is uh transposing the step so it's going up an octave in pitch and that's what gives it that uh higher hit on the one And you could just have this run and I could have shown you that way, but what I wanted to show you really was uh, the MIDI. I just put in, the MIDI is just a bar of the A for the whole bar so that it runs through. And then I just sort of duplicated it out. So we have the kick. And let's take a look at the snare. And these are your velocity settings. So this, you can alter velocity. But what's important to remember is that velocity won't, uh, won't correspond to anything if this is at 100. You know, you'll get no velocity change. So you need to bring this down to have velocity work. And I had it down around 25 or something. So if we go back here, we can listen to the snare. And if we go into the MIDI, we see again, it's just uh, A played for a whole bar. Okay, now we have the kick and the snare. Uh, let's look at the hi-hat. And this one I cheated a little bit. I actually added some delay, a quarter note delay to a hi-hat pattern that's actually triplets. And that's another important thing to mention. Let's just mute this real quick. Uh, so you choose your tempo scale here. And I found it pretty easy to use, you know, the uh, the kick and snare, I think were eighth notes, but then I chose 16th note triplets. So I had to choose 24 to get a full bar. Uh, but I also cheated by going to this effects panel on the right here and adding delay. So a quarter note delay over uh, 16th note triplet hi-hats always sounds pretty cool. That's just a small tip for the future. Let's listen to how it sounds. Now, if I take off the delay, so clearly it sounds better with the delay. So if we add this all in, we have a kick, snare, and hat pattern. Okay, and uh, when we can look at the tom now, uh, the tom, I did increasing velocity, and also I did sort of an arpeggiated pattern. So 12 is an octave, so it's octave, root, third, fifth, and then uh, root, root, third, fifth. So we can hear that when I unmute the tom.
And the last <laughs> drum that I added was a percussion, which is actually a clap. And I had a little brain fire here. I just, I just want two half notes. So what I did was I put it in. I put it in as a chord because let's just stop this and go back to the beginning. Uh, it's three claps at three pitches, so it's a little bit more beefy. But I was just being dumb. I was like, oh man, I want a half note. Uh, but I wanted to start on the two. I want two half notes. So if we look at this, I'll show you what I did here. Here's the claps. Uh, yeah, half notes for four, which is dumb because I should have just had a four, four bar and just had every other on the two and the four. But that's neither here nor there. It works because I offset it so that it hits on the two. So you hear this. And with everything else, here's the whole drum set all together. Okay, so now let's move on to the bass. And it's start, starting to get to pitched instruments. When you want to do syncopation, the this thing kind of sucks. So you're really just sort of hamstrung by the fact that, especially there's no length setting, like on your MIDI. So everything is, I don't know, I just, it was rough. But here's the sub bass. Here's the dirty bass, just two notes. And here is the regular bass. This is more of an arpeggio. But the thing that sucks is if you're trying to do anything sort of groovy. Oh, it's still on. Uh, so you have to turn the arpeggiator off to play it like a real instrument. It's impossible to sort of suss out melodies that aren't super simple when you're using the step sequencer. But still, you know, it's effective, I suppose. Okay, and then next we'll move on to the pad. Uh, we take a look at the pad. I used 4-4, four, four, which is basically like a whole note. Then I used a three bar thing and I had an extra bar. Uh, so that's the reason why this pad looks different. The MIDI events are actually three bars long, so I can get all three. And this is just sort of, it's weird when you do a chord, if you look, it's just the same chord, it'll transpose the whole chord. But the thing is, it's not really harmonically accurate unless you do some math ahead of time. So these chords, they're not exactly uh, the most I would say accurate harmonically, but we can hear them. Oh, we'll go back to the beginning. And finally, we have a lead, and that lead is also an arpeggio uh, type thing. Uh, it's sort of like, a, let me turn this off. I forget how it goes, actually. Let me just... And you can always play it on the keyboard to see what you want. This is sort of, I just had a sort of droning uh, root note, and then it sort of runs down the octave a little bit uh, to create that lead. And so the lead goes like this. And uh, velocity is important on these as well. Uh, so as you can see, the velocity is low because the patch gets affected by how hard the velocity is. So you just sort of tap it and bada boom, bada bing, you know, you're off to the races. Um, so all of this stuff was just like, you know, a bar drawn in in MIDI and it's using the Retrolog synthesizer. So we can sort of uh, listen to the whole thing one by one.
And there you have it, folks. That's uh, simple sequencing with Retrolog se Sequencer. Uh, now, if we go back into the program, you'll see that there are that there are more features uh, down here. There's extra controls, and those sort of mimic the uh, matrix that you have down here. But you can do them from within the sequencer, and you could have parameters control within the sequencer. And there's also the performance control. So if you notice on my toms here, we'll just solo the toms. There's swing. I obviously use that. So uh, those aren't straight sixteenth notes. Those are swung a little bit. So there's, there's extra controls, but I just wanted to take this tutorial to sort of introduce you to the meat and potatoes of how you get sound to come out of Retrolog Sequencer, how you can pitch that sound, and uh, how you can uh, change the different lengths of the patterns and the velocities, and choose which notes are on and which notes are off, and use it to start making music today. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have, please feel free to like or subscribe, and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.